Sounds good. We're all here for the uh, Sky Crane Full Motion Drop Test Test Readiness Review. One in the series of seven or eight meetings <laughs> on reviews that John has put together for this test. Uh, do you have a slide on what you're trying to get out of today? Let's um, do that first. Yeah. All right. So let's get going here. Um, basically, some of the reviews that we've had thus far, we had a test plan and uh, objectives review. I'm bringing up these reviews so you guys can actually see what already has been reviewed. Um, and a lot of that stuff we're going to have to fly through very quickly. I would um, like to just, if we can, just talk about the actions from the previous reviews in brief and not about anything else, just so that we see if we can speed up that part of it. Sounds good. So here's the reviews we've had, uh, tests and ob uh, objectives and requirements, loads and dynamics, data acquisition was yesterday, today we're doing the readiness review, and I'm sure we'll have a Delta test readiness review um, sometime in the beginning of January to close out all the actions coming here. As you know, all know, we're kind of pushing this uh, review a little earlier than we'd like to due to the holidays. And that the uh, dynamics of that test are within what we were expecting of the test, or at least we got the data um, to be able to do the analytical correlation um, um, is going to significantly hit schedule. Um, are these actions needed to be closed or were intended to be closed by this review or, or no. before the test plan gets all signed off? So it will be for the Delta ER. Quick overview of what we're doing. Uh, this we already did it. We already did it. <laughs> 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 yeah, sorry, sorry for perspective views a, a little off, but uh, it's the best I had from images I grabbed quickly. Um, we are doing a full motion drop test. This is a full uh, deployment of the bud and the mobility subsystems with very high fidelity hardware. This is DTM hardware. Um, we've got EM and flight spare mixed hardware and the bud hardware. Um, all the pyros are flight light. These are same lot as we'll actually have in flight. Um, power sent vehicle is going to be built up in SAF using procedures and all the, um, hopefully the same personnel will actually be doing it in flight. So we actually have, you know, this, this build up as a workmanship <coughs> application. We'll talk about that in a bit. Uh, the deployment is done off of a mobile truck crane. Um, this is a truck crane that we brought out uh, the day before Thanksgiving. Um, contracted them out here. We went through a whole bunch of loads and uh, dynamic uh, modeling of the crane. We had accelerometers on it and load cells and a lot of fun stuff to actually be able to ca capture the modes and such uh, that this crane is going to um, give to the test during the uh, deployment. So that's where this photo actually came to or came from. Next slide. This is a little animation to kind of show you a uh, thing. This is courtesy of ATA. Um, I requested to grab it and show it at the beginning because it kind of gives everybody a perspective of what's going to happen in this test. Uh, let's hope that I got all the linking right. So that shows what we are hoping to see. I'll play it again. You can see the. Uh, Hopefully it is that boring. I mean, we are shooting for boring tests. You thought that was boring. It will be. <laughs> <laughs> I saw the other deploy tests. They were pretty boring. That's true. It's good. So hopefully it is that boring. So the crane is definitely getting excited. But yep. uh, per the discussions we had with you guys the other day, it really doesn't contribute that much to the vehicle dynamics. Correct. It's isolated by the descent stage, which isn't really visible in there. It's a little dot, but that's a mass and there's flexibilities. So the crane doesn't participate significantly. The objective in setting the timings, Adam, was to get the right excitation of the mobility system and the chassis and get a yeah. dynamics in the system. Um, test day, it's gonna be one long day. Test day, we start um, transporting the power sent vehicle to the test uh, site. We'll lift the power sent vehicle using a mobile truck crane. Um, test deployment. Um, this will all be uh, basically off of Rich Webster's um, pyro box. He hits go. It'll start the pyrotechnic um, firing sequence. Of course, the release nuts on the 
Uh, Descent Stage will initiate starting the deployment. Um, the butt will deploy, allowing the rover to come down. We'll initiate the uh, mobility um, system about three seconds in. Of course, the bogies will be um, deployed near snatch. Um, the rover will snatch at the end of the butt deployment uh, and uh, the dynamics will settle out. The dynamics we see here uh, are different from one flight uh, due to, you know, no descent stage. Uh, we'll be damping our modes and such. So once you start looking at some of the uh, flight compared to uh, test data, you'll, you'll definitely see some of that stuff. Um, after we have the full John, deployment. Just real quick, uh, when, when exactly will the pyro install the bud retraction mechanism override the... Once the... Um, You'll come down far enough that they both oh, have to okay. engage. We'll so come down there both the we'll bar. Retract. And due to the fact that we're using flight spare, right like the guides, those springs are more powerful than the... Uh, Okay. Uh, yeah. So. But so you'll take you'll 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 descend until the bud uptake is locked out, or you know, spooled all the way up. Yep. Because right like the guides only have two and a half meters of worth of retraction before they fill up their drums and jam. But in flight, we come down. The bright electric guides take up the differential slack, mm -hmm. but the well, uniform the slack. Th they don't know whether they're taking up differential or uniform. They right. just start taking up slack. Right. Right. And so, so, so then there's the a chance that really is exactly flight yeah, like. Yeah, there's there's most likely in flight the 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 bright Alexa guys will do all mm -hmm. the slack maintenance, and mm -hmm. the the bud is really just there in case. Suspended. But by virtue of the ratio of the spring stiffness. Yeah, exactly. That's right. exactly right. Okay, so once we demonstrate the cable management, we will be going into this data checkout. Um, like I said, we're going to talk about this a little bit more. This is basically going to verify some requirements. Um, we'll probably have a discussion on this today on what really needs to get verified, what that process is for um, saying yay or nay, can we go to the next irreversible step of cutting the bridles. Once we fire the umbilical cutter, the umbilical actually doesn't separate from the rover. It is still uh, held on by a brake tie until the descent stage does the flyaway maneuver and actually pulls the umbilical tight and pops that guy. Um, we'll then load the test articles. After this, the test, all the testing is pretty much done. We'll load the test articles onto carts and return everything to clean room. Um, of course, post-test, we will do, be doing post-processing of all the test data. All right, uh, test objectives and requirements. This has already been re uh, reviewed. Um, um, Validation, demonstrate the separations, bud, and mobility deploy all operate within the predicted bounds with no unexpected and or unpredicted system interactions during a full-scale, complete sky crane deployment using flight-like hardware, interfaces, assembly workmanship, and installation procedures. At the time of test, wind shall be less than 10 miles an hour with gusts no less. Um, it's pretty low. No, no, no. It's pretty, it's it's pretty, pretty, it's pretty it's good. It's, it's, it's pretty good. We're guarded by buildings. No, I, I mean, you're pretty sheltered from what's going on, but it can also it's swirl around on you. Is the 10 mile an hour at the JPL weather station up on the Mesa, or is it down here? Yeah, you got to put something on top of the crane? No, we're playing just at the what, using the weather station data. So that's pretty, usually that means that this is, that area is a lot less. Right, so uh, Alright, testing shall be done between 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. on either a sunny, partly sunny, or slightly overcast weather. This is a requirement coming from, obviously, if it's heavily overcast, the humidity is going to be too high and we're not going to be able to test. Um, but this is for shadows and um, uh, angles of the sun that give us the best um, view for the high speed cameras. So, so, so you can't have cell phones. The There's multiple axes. Yeah. Yeah. So Bringing in the National Guard. <laughs> the, the test time is a, is a hard requirement? It, I believe that it actually should be a hard requirement. Um, well, there's a window. Yeah, it's a window, 10 to 2. 10.4 yeah. uh, by 768, res, uh, 500 frames per second. We're going to light it with two 1 kilowatt lamps. Uh, we discussed this yesterday. They need to be on a separate circuit from uh, the camera and the data acquisition. Um, uh, these, these are the cameras that we have available, uh, in-house rental and, and a loaner from Ames. Uh, we locked off yesterday on 
500 frames a second for all the high speed, the exception being the 1024 color. That's incorrect. Okay, so it should be 500 frames. Okay. okay. And, and the 500 frames per second will give us that resolution. So they're yes. all about the same. Yes. Exactly the same. Uh, but it is the only uh, real uh, good color high speed gotcha. camera that we'll have on it. So perhaps. So we'll choose it when it carefully where we put that one. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. And so the um, other ones are free to choose where we put them. Then our then the SA one below that uh, South Tower. Oh, there it is. I'm sorry. Lower South Tower um, because that'll have the prime uh, view of the deployment, okay. the mobility deployment. Tom, I mean, I trust your judgment here. The one thing, the westward looking cameras mm -hmm. are going to have you know a bad background. True. And yeah. so if there's anything that you can do in terms of choosing the camera and choosing the lens type that can help maybe blur the background. I don't know, if, I guess it's all infinite uh, focal length anyway. There's probably not much you can do about that. From those kind of distances, we're probably focused on that. Yeah. Um, so going to this one here, I would like to encourage some other camera views over on for example, and they may just be the, the high def cameras, high defs, and maybe SLRs or something. In, in the southeast? Yeah, over on the roof. Mm -hmm. Okay. The HDs, bingo, we got those with a, with a high def and an SLR, at least in some of the key locations. But anything else that we have, it'd be useful to spread those around. Okay, the, the only, uh, only issues I've got with that is. And then one thing we need to, to think about also is for the upper. Uh, separation views mm -hmm. in high speed. Do you want the same size field of view as the deployment, or do you want something tighter? Mm, that's a good question. You know, our field of view down below is probably a could be a little bit wide. You know, just because yeah, we're prob ourselves. probably yeah. I don't think they need to be the same. I think for the for the for the initial deployment, we can be in tighter. Okay. Actually, no, let me take that back, because I wanted to capture, you know, some of the motion as it comes down. Okay. So, well, our field of view Let's for work that one off. Conceivably, you, could have, okay. you, you might want to choose a camera that's placed to pick up the rover at the location or in the location of, of deployments and final, because at the bottom. So the idea is we've got one. It's out of frame. Well, what we have right now is, in order to catch the full motion, we've got two orthogonal pairs, one basically for the separation event, and then one for the uh -huh. mobility deployment length. And do they overlap the frames? I don't the, think, the they the the I don't think they're going to overlap, but then the overlap will come from the high def cameras, not the high speeds, because the high speed, there's but not much happening that's high speed worthy in the middle. Well, that could be a use oh, for, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that could be a use for the SA-1 color camera. You know, we could we could frame it uh, yeah. vertically to catch, to yeah. it, you get yeah. to catch the whole event. Yeah. We're planning to do that with the 1024, but we're not going to be able to get the 500 oh. frames per second out of That's it. That's okay. And I think the runtime on that is only 12 seconds. That's okay. So That's is okay. there an action? Yeah. Well, the action is we have to have at least one more, at least one more, walk one more tabletop mm -hmm. here on the the details. I mean, this is, I think we're 80% of the way there. The last 20%, I think we just need to hash it out. Yeah, and uh, I guess we're going to need to know, um, like, when we need to deliver our cables to, to bundle with Marty's. Is it on?